Hello, my name is David Whitcomb, and I am the Dixie Trapper. We pride ourselves in safe and humane treatment of all wildlife. Cage traps or humane traps are only humane if they are checked on a regular basis. Today we're going to talk about priorities and facts. So inspect, deter, protect, and trap, and in that order. And services that we provide are both the commercial and residential. Inspection and remediation, trapping and removal, a rent-a-trap program, and hunting. Let's talk nuisance wildlife. Because of its climate, Florida is home to many different species of wildlife. At some point, most Floridians will come across some of the most popular neighborhood critters, including iguanas, raccoons, and opossums. The following information will help you discover more about these fascinating animals and learn some of the best ways to keep your home and property critter-free. Keep in mind that in Florida, all wildlife is protected by anti-cruelty laws and inhumane treatment. Yet the presence of wildlife in residential areas can be a nuisance to residents. There are appropriate ways to manage nuisance wildlife. With the exception of sick or injured wildlife, these issues are typically handled by residents themselves or by professional private wildlife trappers. Now let's talk prevention. As residents of Florida's incredible natural habitat, we must learn to live with the wildlife around us, including iguanas, raccoons, and opossums, because humans are gradually encroaching on many natural animal habitats. Displaced wildlife often has nowhere else to go, so they venture into residential and commercial habitats. You can share a little fruit with an opossum or raccoon that is eating fruit off of the tree in your yard. There may not be much other food available because of the development going on around you. You may cut open a few pieces of the fruit and lay it on the ground for the animal as this sometimes prevents it from biting holes into the hanging fruit. During the initial visit with the homeowner, we tend to talk about ways you can wildlife proof your home. Seal all routes of animal entry. Screen open windows and cover chimney tops or other openings where smaller animals can get through with mesh or screening. If you live in a trailer, seal the open space from the bottom of the trailer to the ground with wire cloth or cement block. Use artificial owls, hawks, or snakes to discourage small birds and squirrels from going into your fruit trees. Sprinkle cayenne pepper around gardens and ornamental plants to keep wildlife from digging them up. Secure garbage cans by running a rope or chain over the lid and tying down each handle. Prevent toppled trash cans by placing cans in some type of anchored rack or tie them to the fence. Take all pet food inside before dark every night so as not to encourage an opossum or raccoon to stay for a free handout. Leave a bucket containing a hose that is turned on very slowly in, a, in the yard to discourage a raccoon from using your pool as a toilet. This running stream effect is usually much more attractive to the animal and may save you from having to clean the pool too often. Submerge wire mesh horizontally around the circumference of your pond, stretching the mesh and leaving the inside free to deter a raccoon from raiding the fish. The fish will have the center of the pond open and the raccoon can't reach over the wire because the wire is unstable. Raccoons tend not to stand on it. You can wrap metal guards about 18 inches or wider around trees 5 to 6 feet above the ground to deprive raccoons of access to rooftops and other buildings. Lock all pet doors at night to keep raccoons out of the kitchen or garage and spray fox scent or fox urine to deter raccoons and other small animals such as squirrels from going into your garden or coming onto your property. Now I'd like to talk about common misconceptions of nuisance wildlife. The first is, it's okay to hand feed or tame wild animal. This is most definitely false. You should never attempt to hand feed or tame a wild animal. Wildlife that has no fear of people never survive for very long. Second, removing nuisance wildlife will solve the problem for good. 
faults again. Trapping and removing nuisance wildlife such as an opossum or raccoon will only temporarily solve a problem. Another opossum or raccoon will move in to fill the niche. Relocating wildlife into the woods or the wild is also not in the best interest of the animal. Thrusting the animal into another animal's territory means it has to fight and compete with the resident animal for a limited food supply and nesting area. In almost all cases, it is the newcomer that loses, many dying from infection from bite wounds and others getting killed by cars in an attempt to return to their original territory. Third, it is unusual for wildlife to come out during the day, and when they do, they most likely have rabies. This too is false. At certain times of the year, there may be an increased appearance of opossums, raccoons, and armadillos, including during daylight hours. This behavior generally occurs because the animals are having their young, and they become much more active during the day and the night as they search for food. After the babies have left the nests or dens, the level of animal activity returns to normal. Fourth, a drooling opossum has rabies. This is not generally true. Most opossums drool. This is not a sign of rabies. In general, an opossum presents a far lower health risk to humans than do dogs and cats, as it has a natural high level of immunity to most diseases. Statistics indicate that there has not been a case of rabies in opossum in Florida since rabies statistics have been kept. Briefly on iguanas. Iguanas can cause damage by eating vegetable, landscape, plants, shrubs, and trees, as well as orchids and many other flowers. They can also dig burrows next to seawalls and foundations, increasing the chance of erosion and eventual collapse. The droppings of iguanas along decks and docks, and sometimes in swimming pools, are also a frequent complaint. I've not found many of these in Polk County, and the ones I have found belong to a nearby neighbor. It is important to be responsible pet owners. Now briefly on raccoons. Raccoons are found in all types of habitats, although they generally prefer wetland regions. Over the past decade, raccoons have become more comfortable living in human communities and do not fear people as most wildlife do. In fact, they can be pretty bold. They are especially active at night, looking for food. The raccoon is a seasonal eater that prefers fish, crayfish, and small mammals in the springtime. The remainder of the year it feeds on acorns, seeds, fruits, vegetables, insects, and other invertebrates. Now I'd like to spend some time on opossums. No matter where you live in Florida, there are opossums. The adult opossum is the size of a cat and is light gray to black in color. It has a pink nose, feet, and a rat-like tail with black ears and a pointed snout. Opossums are not rodents. This non-aggressive animal has survived since the time of the dinosaurs and can adjust to living just about anywhere. As long as it can find the necessities of life, water, food, and a den, it will be happy. The most common den sites are under wood piles, decks, and mobile homes, although the opossum has the most teeth of any land mammal, it does not chew wood. Opossums are rarely seen together, and except during breeding season or when a female is with her babies, the opossum is a solitary animal. It fights only if attacked, surprised, or cornered, but prefers to run away or play possum, which is an involuntary reaction to danger. An opossum will hiss or growl and show its teeth when frightened. The opossum is very beneficial as a rodent and carrion eater. Besides eating all types of dead animals, it eats a variety of food including overripe fruit, grapes, and berries, insects such as cockroaches, crickets, beetles, slugs, snails, etc. Also mice, rats, and roof rats, snakes, lizards, and eggs. It also cleans up underneath food which would normally attract rats. An opossum will eat side by side with a cat out of a dish of a cat food that is left outside and it will consider the cat food a gourmet meal. 
It is not necessary to relocate an opossum that you see in your yard. The opossum is not dangerous to you or your pets if left alone. While any warm-blooded mammal can carry rabies, it is highly unlikely that an opossum will. An opossum does, however, carry fleas, as do all wild animals and some domestic animals. An opossum may get into garbage cans, eat your pet's food, or eat cultivated fruits and vegetables. It may enter a home through ripped screens or vents and duct systems. To alleviate these problems, follow guidelines for preventing nuisance wildlife. If you come across an opossum in your attic or garage, try to find out how it got in. Eliminate its access point and clean and disinfect the area. Here's a few possums I've removed. Thank you for your time. We hope you found something that was useful and educational to you. If you need any further information or like a, an inspection or uh, need any assistance with wildlife and cohabitating with it, please give us a call, 863-272-9049, set up an appointment, or email dixietrapper at gmail.com. And as always, visit us at www.dixietrapper.com or find us on Pinterest, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. Thank you.